How do you uh, keep secrets from another version of yourself who has made all the same choices or all the same mistakes or all different choices or different mistakes but knows why you are who you are? <laughs> All right, so I'd love to know what the impetus for the idea was because it's obviously very existential, you know, what makes us who we mm -hmm. are, but for you, was there a moment where you were pondering that and you thought, wait, maybe I could explore it in a show? It was, it was, well, I think it came from two different sides. On one side, we wanted to uh, tell a traditional espionage story mm -hmm. that had all the thrills and twists and, and uh, you know, reveals that a spy story would. Um, but on the other side, we wanted to, instead of doing a world where like there's a Berlin Wall and it's a physical construct we wanted to tell it in a metaphysical way yeah. and to make it a show about identity and what if you know what if we had made different choices would our lives have turned out differently mm. you know and and how do you uh, keep secrets from another version of yourself who has made all the same choices or all the same mistakes or all different choices or different mistakes but knows why you are who you are mm. uh, you know in a spy world that became a really intriguing proposition yeah and we, we originally when we first started talking Jess and I have known each other for a very long time mm -hmm. we, we went to high school together oh, we, great, yeah. We have a we have a, a good shorthand. When we yeah. first started talking about it, uh, wanting to do a project together, um, we we were first we were just kind of looking at the story and not sure if it was a feature or a television or what right. it was. We were just yeah. sort of um, trying to, to to purely explore that that story um, and really look at it from a character point of view and that main question of sort of nature versus nurture and identity. Um, because for us, that was the really the compelling question was yeah. was people and the implications of yeah. the concept. Um, and at first, it was an independent film with the world sort of in the background, and then it was sort of a bigger film, and then we were like, oh no, this is a TV show. Yeah. Um, and so we ultimately settled on that, but having come through that development process, we really um, always kind of were laser focused on that, that character aspect mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the show, so it, it really, I think, it sticked with it and retained. Yeah, I'll tell you, the moment we knew that this concept was going to work was when we, uh, when we first sat down and read the scene with the first scene with Howard and Howard Prime in their mm. apartment together alone, yep. where they're talking about food and music and, yep. and different choices they've made that have been different. And it's just, it's a show about, you know, it's like six, seven minutes of these yeah. two just sitting around getting to know each other. Just talking about ordinary you know, things. Yeah, yeah, and having the time to explore that and yeah. explore it patiently and really see them, uh, you know, at this moment of peace. You know, a lot of stories would sort of force you into just like, we gotta get right into yeah. it. But no, the more you care about these people, I think the more you're gonna be surprised by the, the twists and surprises that come later. Well, as you said, you know, pretty much figuring out who your main character, your actor, I mean, in a post-orphan black world where you've yeah. got a Tatiana Maslany who can show you, okay, this is what we can hit in terms of dual roles now, mm -hmm. um, and certainly when you're when you're talking about kind of a, a sci-fi infusion, sort of to the story. Yeah. Did you always have J.K. in mind? Yeah. Did you? Was it a large search and seeing? You know, mm -hmm. uh, who can play no. against themselves? No. There was really. I mean, as soon as he expressed interest, I knew that if if uh, if we couldn't get him, that I would be dead in the water. Yeah. <laughs> that no, because really, because he's important. just you know he he embodies these two sides of, of what one person can be. On one side, you've got you know whiplash, you've got the, the scary version, you've got the one who's a, more of a man of action. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you know, you've got uh, uh, Juno's dad, you yeah. know, and you've got that kindness and that goodness, and you see them both in JK and the way he presents this character in these very sort of subtle ways. And, you know, we wanted an actor who would approach it uh, from the inside out you know, who would find the core of both of those characters and would just sort of exist and inhabit the roles as opposed to trying to put on a costume or put on a yeah. character. We also really wanted, we didn't, you know, there, there were definitely occasions when we were talking about sort of 25, 35, 30 year old actors yeah. for the role. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we were really, um, we were, we were pretty sure from the from the from the top that we wanted someone with a bit more sort of like lived in experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that especially because of the concept and sort of shared childhood, shared young adulthood, mm -hmm. um, we really wanted uh, the mileage um, yeah. Yeah. on both yeah. his character and also in that relationship with uh, with Olivia. It was mm -hmm. um, it was something that was really important to us. Yeah. And one of the things I really loved about the pilot in, is that there's a timelessness to it. There's a certain mm -hmm. inability to kind of immediately figure out when does this take place. Yeah. You yeah. give a little tech cues of going like, wait a minute, this is not 
not the you yeah. know current kind of thing. That's great because the audience gets to kind of play along in terms of trying to piece it together. Yeah. For you constructing a story, what were some of the choices in terms of leaning into what do you want us to see? How do you want to lean in and, and lean away from technology? Yeah, the big goal it, for me in science fiction is you know you build a huge world, right? right? And you build it down to its smallest detail. And then I think what we tried to do uh, with the writer's room and, and uh, as as a writer, I, it was always about you know build this huge world and then turn off the overhead lights mm. and give the audience into flashlight and let them walk around through it because what I always find for me as a person who gets into science fiction I want to just sort of look at what I want to look at in mm -hmm. closer detail I don't want to be told what to look at yeah. and so I think you know that's what is very important that you know you invest more because I, I hope that different science fiction fans, you know, watch this show and latch on to different things. Like, why is the technology inside the Office of Interchange sort of locked in a key era? Mm -hmm. You know, why uh, do the phones appear to be different in that opening scene yes. on this other side? You know, and then as you start to peel out the story, and I hope freeze frame some of the skylines because there are a lot of secrets in there, <laughs> you, you really begin to get a sense of, you know, what are the choices that we're making. But we never want to just kind of hang a lantern on it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be the worst way to go about a science fiction story. Yeah.